A lot of people tell me that Singapore is an expensive city, but I disagree. To prove to you that Singapore isn't as expensive as you might think, out of all the sights to see and food to eat in Singapore, I'm going to share with you 10 that you can do for under $10. And most of these are going to be free. So number one, and my absolute top recommendation for all visitors coming to Singapore is to eat at a hawker center. Eating at a hawker center will cost you as little as $5 for a plate of tasty food, and sometimes even less than that. This could be a plate of chicken rice, a bowl of laksa, some satay, prawn noodles, or even a popular roll. While this is a $10 challenge, I do usually recommend budgeting a little bit more, say $15 or $20 per person, as this will allow you to order a few dishes and try out a variety of flavors. There are over 100 hawker centers across the island to choose from, and many specialize in a certain meal of the day or type of food. I usually recommend tourists check out Old Airport Road, Maxwell, La Passat, which is home to the famous Satay Street, Chong Baru, or East Coast Lagoon. Make sure that you get something to drink as well. Fresh sugar cane is a great way to cool down on a hot evening, but I really recommend trying out some local coffee as well. So number two then is drinking local coffee. Local coffee or coffee is a tasty and affordable way to get your caffeine fix when visiting Singapore. It's widely available from indoor and outdoor coffee shops throughout the city and it's cheap. The most expensive one I've seen is about $3, but typically expect to pay around $1 to $2, especially if it's an outdoor shop. My favorite order is iced coffee si kosong, which means iced coffee with evaporated milk and no sugar. If you want to drink it like the locals, simply order a copy, but personally, I find this a bit sweet. Unless you have a sweet tooth, I recommend ordering your copy Sildai, which means less sweet. I usually recommend Yakun as a reliable shop to visit to get that true Singapore copy flavor and it's air conditioned. Number three on my list is to explore Fort Canning Park. This is completely free. There is no charge to explore the park and it's an incredible historic site sitting right in the center of Singapore, playing host to famous Instagram spots, gardens, a lovely hotel, and the remnants of old fortifications. I recommend taking a walk around, particularly at the top of the hill, to check out the old buildings and explore some of the history of Singapore. There have been fortifications and artifacts here since the 14th century. There is also this famous Instagram spot as part of the fortifications that you might have to queue up if you want to take a selfie there. The easiest way to get to Fort Canning Park is to walk over from Doby Gort, Clark Key or Fort Canning MRT stations. On the theme of something green, for number four, I recommend the Singapore Botanic Gardens. Nearly all of the gardens can be explored for free. These gardens are over 150 years old and a UNESCO World Heritage listed. There are over 10,000 types of plants to see, including rare and endangered species not common elsewhere in the world. To cover as much ground as possible in a visit, I usually recommend people start at the Botanic Gardens MRT station and walk their way down to the new Napier MRT station. Make sure that you check out the themed garden areas along the way, such as the Healing Garden that showcases plants traditionally important in medicine. Another free site to visit in Singapore is the Merlion. The Merlion is this iconic symbol of Singapore. It's a mythical creature with the head of a lion and the body of a fish. I'm told it represents the mix of Singapore's original name, Singapore the Lion City, and the representation of Singapore's humble beginnings as a fishing village. There's no charge to walk around the Merlion and take a selfie with it, and I usually recommend tourists also walk through the nearby underpass to get to the Fullerton building. It has some really interesting history of Singapore, including the story of how Singapore acquired its first tranche of gold in the 60s. Check out the Buddha Tooth Relic Temple. This is a cultural landmark located in Singapore's Chinatown. It was a temple built in a style based on the Tang Dynasty, and it houses what Buddhists regard as the sacred Buddha tooth relic. It also contains a giant stupa made of 420 kilograms of gold. It's free to visit and can be found right outside the newly opened Maxwell MRT station. The National Gallery of Singapore also has some great free sections that you do not need to pay for a ticket to enter. There are free access areas and a roof garden that often has installations that you can explore free of charge. Another free favorite I like to recommend to tourists who might not have much time in Singapore is the waterfall at Jewel. Even if you only have a four hour transit in Singapore, I recommend coming out of the transit area to visit this 40 meter high indoor waterfall that's surrounded by over 200 plants and trees. There is no fee to access the waterfall or take advantage of the relaxing green seating areas around it. Check out the canopy park level at the top for a less crowded view. You can pay a few dollars to access the bridge or attractions around the waterfall. I found these to be worth it if you're looking for something to tie the kids out before the next flight. One thing I haven't talked about yet in this video is how to get around. Catching the train or bus in Singapore fits in my under $10 challenge as each ride will not cost you more than $2.26. Singapore's train lines are mostly underground where it's cooler, they're air conditioned, and will take you to nearly everything else I've included in this list. Catching the train is a great way to get around Singapore. If you're interested in more about how visitors should catch the train in Singapore, check out my guide here.